Hi, I'm Jonathan Roberts. Today I'm going to show you some approaches that I like to take in teaching popular music to students, especially younger students. I think we've all been in that place in our teaching careers when a student comes in with something by Taylor Swift, Coldplay, Maroon 5, or some other popular artist that we've never heard of before and says, oh, I'd really like to learn this tune. Or if a relative that has no idea what level they're at gets them a big songbook of music that they're at least on the surface, nowhere near ready for. We all have that moment of we don't want to say no, but at the same time, we're not really sure where to start. So I'd like to share with you sort of my journey through that process and share with you some approaches that I've found successful in working with students in popular music. And looking at it in a bigger picture sense, uh, this should be part of every teacher's curriculum because you know, even though it's very different than what we may have been taught in school as classically trained musicians, this is part of the culture of our country, of our uh, youth. And if you look back at music history, it would have been considered sort of, uh, I don't want to say insanity, but it, uh, it wouldn't have been considered right to ignore the uh, the music of one's own culture in their music education. So I like to look at it in the bigger context of this. And then in the context of schooling, I just think it's kind of funny that I have uh, ten, ten, about 10 years of schooling, four degrees, I have my doctorate, and uh, I didn't really learn how to do any of this <laughs> except for the occasional uh, elective throughout school, and I imagine many of your experiences are sort of the same. So I'm hoping that this will give you some starting places in exploring a variety of approaches with popular music with your students. I figured I'd go ahead and dive straight in with a tune and just show you how I might walk through it with a student. This is Hey Jude by The Beatles. Figured I'd pick something that most people know, even if people out there don't necessarily listen to a lot of popular music. And when, a, when you're first starting a piece of popular music with a student, especially if it's not familiar, a good starting place is to listen to a recording of the music. Most, most of this stuff is available on YouTube. So if you just do a quick YouTube search and listen to it, I would do that here, but the, the YouTube police will take down my video if I, if I play the commercial recording of Hey Jude, but that's another reason I wanted to pick this one because I think everybody knows how, how this goes. So there was a point in time where I tried to teach popular music the same way that I taught classical music, and it was torture. Uh, if you've ever tried to teach pop music by doing all of the reading of arrangements, um, if you're anything like I used to be, we'd be stuck on maybe the first four measures for about two months until uh, eventually it just got cast aside and in general it was not a positive experience for the student or for myself. So uh, what's good to keep in mind is what the student can start with quite easily. So if we take a look at this, hey Jude, if I play it exactly the way it's written, it comes out like this. If you have a student that's in their first few years of study, this will probably be very difficult to do. So um, one question you'll want to start with is, does the student want to sing uh, whatever the tune is? Which will, you'd be surprised at the students that kind of pop out with and say, yeah, of course I want to play and sing. That changes things a lot, especially for a lot of popular music that's conceived vocally. Uh, there are some pieces of popular music that just will not work if it's not sung. Uh, this is not one of them. This one actually works pretty well. Uh, with just using chords and the melody. So if the answer is no, uh, I just want to do a solo version of it, and they can't quite handle the arrangement as it is, even if we take some stuff out. What I like to do is start with the chord symbols, which I think everybody out there knows how to read, uh, at least basic chord charts. And this one works out nicely because the key is not terribly difficult. It's uh, F major. And if uh, students aren't super familiar with how to work out chords, I, I have a couple of workarounds that I like to use for that. If you want to teach your student how to form any major chord or any minor chord in any key, I like to just have them count half steps. So for example, if a student, for whatever reason, is not comfortable figuring out an F major chord at the beginning of this tune, we'll just walk it through and I'll show them. It's, it's, a, it's a cheat way to figure out a, a major chord, but we'll start with the root F and then count up four half steps. One, two, three, four, and then another three. One, two, three. 
And you could actually spend a good part of our lesson just going through how a major chord is constructed and have them find it in a variety of keys. Now the part that you lose here is the context of it being in a key. So with F major being the one chord, and C major being the five chord, then back to the one chord, and then B flat later on, the four chord. We do lose that, but if you have a tune that's in F sharp major, and you have to wait until your student has played the F sharp major scale, and then gone through all of the chord functions in the key of F sharp major, then um, that's gonna be a, a long treacherous road. So it's a, it's a little bit of a cheat way to figure out major chords, but it sort of satisfies that, that pop music itch for students. And they're still counting half steps and they're doing some theory stuff. It's not a total uh, Cliff Notes version of figuring out chords. And then by the same token, if you have minor chords, it's just reversed. So um, say you wanted your student to figure out an F minor chord, they could start with the root. And this time count three half steps, two, three, and then count four half steps. One, two, three, four. And you can just have your student practice finding major and minor chords in a whole bunch of keys, and that opens up a whole universe of figuring out chords for popular music. So what they can do as a starting place is just play these block chords in the left hand using this system that we just went through, and then playing just the melody either by ear or using the music as a guide. And with popular music, I'm totally fine. I actually even really encourage students figuring these things out by ear. And presumably if they're coming to you wanting to learn this tune, they already know it really well and can figure that out quite easily. So playing it like that, it would sound something like this. And at least at the beginning, if we have a dominant seven chord, like in this case we have C7, at least at the beginning I'll just say to ignore the sevens and then we can add that part in later. So um, what I like to do actually before we even start is I'll, I'll play a rendition like I just played for you and I'll ask the student, okay, if we do this, it's gonna sound like this. Is that okay? And they'll usually be pretty upfront with you if they think that, that, that that still sounds cool and they're up for it or if they feel like it's an oversimplified version and they're not so crazy about it. I find that if you're pretty uh, direct or uh, kindly honest with a student, letting them know what it will sound like, the arrangement that you put together with them, that they'll be able to achieve, they're pretty receptive to that in both directions if they'll still want to do it or if they'll say, oh, maybe this tune's not, not for me after all at the piano. Now, next steps you can take with this to sort of create a, a fuller arrangement is if they want to sing, you can have the left hand do the roots and the right hand do the chords. And with a lot of pop music, I find that this sort of pop bass rhythm works out very nicely. It's just a dotted quarter eighth rhythm. So for this tune, uh, it would be uh, starting on F, two. And you know, even, even a beginner student would be able to handle that, just showing them that rhythm. And you're getting in some uh, rhythm activity with them. A, a lot of the stuff in popular music really does cross over to what they're working on in their classical studies. So once they have that pop bass line, uh, starting with that, they can play the chords that you've taught them how to figure out using this system. Or if you're working on chord functions, if they're familiar with the key, you can have them play those chords in the right hand. And then when they're comfortable with that, if they're up for singing, it, then they would sing over the top of that. Now I'm not a singer, but this is just for the purpose of demonstration. Ba -da, ba -da -da -da. So on. And then if you want to take that a step further, you can introduce inversions of chords to um, keep everything a little tighter in the right hand. So like if I were playing this not really thinking about it, I might start on the first inversion, and second inversion, C major, add that seven in, back to the first inversion, and reposition. And then if you want to take parts of the arrangement itself and work that in, you can. So uh, in this case, 
when you have that left hand eighth note rhythm, if you have a student that can handle that and read it okay, you could have them play melody in the top and do what's written in the left hand. So as you can see, without approaching it like you would a normal piece of classical music, there is a lot that you can do here to create an arrangement of, of, of just about any popular tune with a student. Now again, there are going to be some tunes out there that just no matter what you do, it's not really going to work that great on solo piano. The first thing that comes to mind is rap, of course, or something that just has too many parts that are very familiar to the tune that short of having a third hand is just not going to work for solo piano. It would have to be sung or it would have to be watered down to a point where uh, the student might not be quite so crazy about it. I wanted to show you another example that's a, a little more complicated just to show you another example. Uh, this tune, I'm Yours. So this is an example of a tune where the chords are a little bit more complicated and uh, it has characteristics that would need to be tweaked a little bit more if you arrange it with a student. And this is where your own creativity is going to come into play to figure out a way that you can teach it where your student can handle it easily and that they're learning uh, stuff with it, but it won't be frustrating for the student and they'll be able to uh, get the gratification of playing something that they're really familiar with. So I'm yours. So now if I played this the way it's actually written, it would sound something like this. So as you can see, I'm, I'm struggling with this myself <laughs> a little bit. So this is an example of another tune that is hard to translate to solo piano very well or very smoothly. So I'll, I'll show you uh, some approaches that I've taking, taken with this in working with a student. I always like to start with the chords. So here we're in the key of B major. If we wanted to do B major scale and start working on the chord functions of B major, that's cool. Or if we wanted to just dive straight in and figure, figure it out using that sort of cheat sheet way I showed you earlier, we would figure out the chords, B major, F sharp major, G sharp minor, E major. And one cool thing, well two cool things about pop music is one, they usually stay in the same key for the whole time and the other bonus is that it's usually the same three or four chords for a lot of it with some exceptions so it can it can actually be learned quite quickly if you sort of use this tailored tailored approach now this one because it's so rhythmic if we use that same approach as we did with hey jude and just sort of did the blocked chords in the left hand and the melody in the right hand <laughs> Technically, it's correct. Uh, it ha has the right chords and it has the, uh, the right melody, but we're losing that sort of reggae feel to it. So you'll want to be creative about getting features like that in. So what I did with this particular student is we took the chords and we put them in the right hand. We took the root and put that in the left hand. And the, the ultimate hope is going to be to do something like this. And the, the hope for, uh, for this student is to sing it while playing it, so this, this works out nicely. As you can tell from my demonstration earlier, this is one of those pieces that it's, or one of those tunes that it's really hard to do as a solo piano arrangement and be able to get everything in there reasonably easily without having to, to practice it a ton. Now, that rhythm that I just played, that's a tricky rhythm to be able to play solidly without, um, without stopping, without hesitations and sing it. So you can water any of these things down as stepping stones. So what I did for this one is I brought it down to uh, just, just back and forth eighth notes. And that's a lot easier to sing. and so on and so forth. 
Uh, I wanted to finish by showing you one more tune that shows you sort of a middle ground that kind of works as solo piano and at the same time presents some other challenges. This is the tune Senorita. And this is just a screenshot of the first page. Hopefully you'll be able to see that okay in, in the video. And this one's very rhythmic and uh, it also has some chords that are a, a little bit more outside the box. Now this one's a little bit more doable but still very rhythmically challenging if I play it exactly as it is. So this tune goes... Again, as you can tell from my struggling with it, it's not very easy. And just as an aside, I'm sure a lot of you teachers out there will agree with me. It's always funny when a student comes with a piece like this and says, I want to do a fun piece. I'm a bunch, I, can, I can feel a bunch of you nodding at me right now. And it's always kind of funny in going into the pedagogy of it because um, Sometimes there's a sense that because a piece of music might be in the popular universe, somehow that makes it easier or not require as much work or uh, doesn't require as much practice technique. But as, as you can tell from my many mistakes I'm making with my demonstrations, it's actually in many ways much harder than normal classical music, especially if you're trying to read it ex exactly the way it is off the, off the page. That's just an aside. I meant to say that at the beginning of the video and I totally forgot. So uh, for this example, there are a lot of seven chords. So if you want to introduce the seven chords, you can use that same, if you don't want to go into this, the sort of in-depth theory of it, doing chord functions, adding sevens, you can do the same sort of technique where you count four half steps three half steps, although most students are, are, are reasonably good with a C major seven chord, like is in the second chord of this tune. And then to do a, set, uh, a major seven chord, you just add another note that's one, two, three, four, four half steps up, as, in the, uh, as is the case in the third measure here. So I'm going to skip to where the tune comes in. And again, I'll start with the student by saying, okay, well, this is, this is probably what the tune is going to sound like after we work on it. Again, if they want to sing it, all you have to do is plug in that pop bass in the left hand, and it actually works pretty nicely here. Uh, this one, for the greater good, I'll, I'll try to sing it without, <laughs> without the words for the sake of demonstration. But if you just plug in that pop bass with the roots, you can do any of those chords with the right hand just blocked, and it actually sounds uh, reasonably good. And then you can even take that to the next level too if you want to take that approach with a student who is has a good sense of rhythm and is keen about singing, the right hand, you can change up the rhythms as well, mainly focusing on the off beats. So that sort of uh, comping would look something like. And another thing that I actually love about teaching pop music is it really drives the rhythm and the steady pulse. Because with uh, few exceptions, pop music is the same exact tempo from beginning to end. And especially with a lot of tunes being familiar to parents, if mom and dad are listening, they can tell very clearly if something is not in rhythm. So you'll get your, your students' parents on your side when it comes to correcting rhythm, whereas with classical music, which isn't as steeply ingrained in the culture, rhythm can be kind of helter-skelter sometimes and nobody has any idea, and then uh, you uh, pull them through it. <laughs> and again, I, I, can, I can feel many of you nodding with me right now. Um, so uh, that is my approach to teaching popular music, uh, especially with my classical background 
and this is by no means the only way you can approach it. So hopefully you're able to take some things that I showed you today and be able to uh, apply it to some of your own teaching and maybe open some uh, new doors to some new music that you may not have considered before. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this helpful, please do hit the subscribe button. We would love to have you as part of our YouTube community. My name is Jonathan Roberts. Thank you very much.